On this continent of extremes, reptiles have learned to adapt to the boom and bust rhythms of nature. In Australia's arid centre, it may be years between rains. But when the skies open up, the desert is a place reborn. The freshly drenched landscape doesn't only benefit the locals, it attracts visitors that come to reap the rewards. Budrigars swarm to the desert. Able to sense rains from thousands of kilometers away, they journey here in giant superflocks. The abundance of fresh grass seed triggers a breeding frenzy. The budgies partner up. And a month later, they're busy rearing young. They make their nests in the privacy of tree hollows. Although they're shielded here, there's still reason for caution. The Woma python is the desert's most notorious constrictor. It's usually a reptile specialist. But when there are birds in abundance, it will make an exception. With a preference for cold-blooded prey, the Woma doesn't have or need heat-sensing pits like other pythons. When it's after a meal, it relies on its sense of smell and sight. With a pointed head, Womas are adept diggers. It's a skill usually reserved for entering abandoned animal burrows to shelter from the elements. But today, it's searching for a meal. A nest so close to the ground is a perfect target. With such powerful bodies, Woma pythons can squash their prey against nest or burrow walls to subdue them. But today, it uses its sharp teeth to hold the budgie mother in place. Then, using its muscular coils, the python takes her life. Once the mother is consumed, the Woma targets the father. With no one left to defend the chicks, the python won't leave until it's made a meal of the whole family. Creatures who'd never typically venture out in the daylight make an appearance. The black-headed python usually spends the entire day in its burrow. But it heads straight to the nearest stream for some assistance with its shedding routine. The water helps to slough away old skin and scales. While submerged, the python takes the opportunity to recharge. Like a solar panel, its black head absorbs the sun's energy. Powering it up to hunt down the influx of food brought by the rains. The monsoon is Kakadu's giver of life. But unfortunately, it can welcome some unwanted residents. During wet times, invasive cane toads breed in epic proportions. Females are capable of producing over 70,000 young a year. Since the toads were introduced to Australia in the 1930s, they have decimated native animal populations. Armed with venom-secreting glands, they're lethal to most creatures who encounter them. 
Some of the most vulnerable to their toxins are snakes that try to make a meal. However, one snake species has an extreme adaptation to deal with this extreme intruder. The keelback snake is entirely venomless, yet it can eat the cane toad and survive. Incredible new studies reveal that the keelback has rapidly evolved into a toad-killing machine. In less than a century, the keelback's bodies have gotten bigger to metabolize their prey's toxins. And their heads have gotten smaller to limit the intake of food. The smaller the toad, the less poison to digest. A water specialist, keelbacks are primed to stake out the moist habitats the toads thrive in. Their ridge-like scales enable them to grip on as they traverse slippery surfaces searching for a meal. As the toads invade in plague proportions, food is never far off. The keelback has no venom to subdue its prey. Its weapon is sharp, backward curved teeth that holds the meal in place. Unlike other snakes that swallow their food head first, the keelback does the opposite. It's thought that devouring the toads from the rear may be an adaptation to assist in detoxification. As humans struggle to control the worsening toad invasion, perhaps the death-defying killback will be part of the solution. In deep water, this feeding frenzy benefits everyone. Individuals use other crocs to pull against to tear off mouthfuls.